the 8th of June, 1937, on a tiny coral atoll isolated in the southern mid-Pacific Ocean, a group of American scientists who will have traveled over a quarter of the Earth's globe with eight tons of equipment will observe one of nature's great phenomena. In 1937, an extraordinary joint expedition unfolded, merging the relentless curiosity of National Geographic Society with the pioneering spirit of the U.S. Navy. Their mission, to unravel the mysteries surrounding a rare total eclipse of the sun, poised to cast its celestial spectacle upon a remote corner of the enchanting South Pacific on June 8th. While the scientific triumphs of this remarkable journey were lauded and meticulously recorded in the annals of academia, a profound tale lay hidden, shrouded in secrecy and unspoken truths. As the world transformed before their very eyes, the expedition's observations mirrored a rapidly evolving global landscape. In an astonishing twist, an undisclosed chronicle emerged from the depths of anonymity. This journal bears witness to the expedition's enthralling odyssey and the indomitable souls marooned on a deserted island for a harrowing month. Nestled alongside other personal accounts, this documentary uncovers a resolute quest for authenticity, painting an unvarnished portrait of the expedition as it braved the approaching dark tides that would irrevocably alter their destiny. Prepare to embark on an extraordinary journey where truth eclipses the facade and the forgotten narratives of an intrepid few illuminate a pivotal chapter of history. In the summer of 1937, the world was on the brink of immense global change. As we delve into the events of that time, we gain a deeper understanding of the conversations held among expedition scientists, Navy personnel, and their families and co-workers. In Europe, the aggressive stance of Nazi Germany, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, persisted. Having come to power four years earlier, Germany sought to demonstrate its perceived superiority by hosting the Summer Olympics in Berlin the previous year. Meanwhile, Italy, governed by the National Fascist Party led by Benito Mussolini, had formed an alliance with Nazi Germany seven months prior. These developments set the stage for the rising tensions that would shape the continent. In Russia, a significant scientific expedition was about to take place near the North Pole, marking the first ever encampment of its kind. However, Within Russia, Joseph Stalin's regime began purging individuals deemed anti-Soviet, resulting in the loss of over 724,000 lives. These chilling actions would have a lasting impact on the political landscape. Back in Europe, Neville Chamberlain was three weeks away from assuming the role of Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Chamberlain would dedicate himself tirelessly to keeping his country out of conflicts in Europe, primarily through a policy of appeasement towards Germany. Unfortunately, this approach would inadvertently contribute to Germany's unchecked expansion into neighboring regions. Across the Pacific, tension between the Empire of Japan and the Republic of China had been escalating since Japan's invasion of Manchuria several years prior. Two months later, the Marco Polo Bridge incident would spark the Second Sino-Japanese War, a conflict that would eventually bleed into what would become the Second World War. Amidst these global events, other noteworthy occurrences unfolded. The iconic Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco was nearing completion, preparing to open its majestic spans to the public. Aviation was a source of great enthusiasm and daredevilry during this time. Millionaire Howard Hughes personally broke the record for the flight between Los Angeles and Newark, New Jersey, completing the journey in a remarkable seven and a half hours. The pioneering female aviator, Amelia Earhart, was also gearing up for her groundbreaking around the world trip. Additionally, Germany's proud flying airship, the Hindenburg, was en route to New Jersey for a routine transatlantic flight. The audacious feats of aviators like Charles Lindbergh, who had accomplished his epic solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean a decade earlier, had inspired a new era of aviation. In the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt had begun his second term as president a few months earlier. Focusing on domestic issues and the economy, his administration adopted a policy of neutrality regarding the conflicts unfolding in Europe. However, it was clear that the majority of American citizens held concerns about the likelihood of another catastrophic global war. The year 1937 stood at the precipice of monumental change worldwide. The events and circumstances of that time set the stage for the tumultuous years that lay ahead, shaping the course of history and leaving an indelible mark on the collective memory of humanity. The extraordinary expedition embarked on a journey that united leading astronomers, scientists and experts 
as they traversed the vast expanse from around the United States. The U.S. Navy was led by Captain Julius Helweg, superintendent of the U.S. Naval Observatory. Fifty-eight years old at the time, Captain Helweg had a distinguished naval career and received the Navy Cross during World War I. Captain Helweg led a team, just after the First World War, to bring back German warships to the U.S. for study. Some of this documentary was supported by Captain Helweg's personal accounts. Leading the scientific team on this groundbreaking endeavor was none other than Professor Dr. Samuel A. Mitchell from the University of Virginia Observatory. A seasoned veteran in his field, Dr. Mitchell, at the age of 63, brought a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table. Over the course of his illustrious career, Dr. Mitchell had actively participated in no less than 10 solar eclipse expeditions, spanning an impressive 37 years. In the production of this documentary, we were fortunate to have access to Dr. Mitchell's personal accounts, providing us with invaluable insights into the scientific endeavor we are exploring. Like Captain Helweg, Dr. Mitchell's first-hand experiences shed light on the challenges, triumphs, and discoveries made during this extraordinary mission. The expedition was broadcasted to captivated radio listeners around the world by NBC. Leading the charge was none other than the esteemed veteran broadcaster, George Hicks. At the age of 32, George Hicks had already made a name for himself in the broadcasting industry. Known for his deep voice and remarkable interviewing skills, Hicks had conducted interviews with presidents, famous sports personalities, and reported from some of the world's most significant events. George Hicks was about to embark on a new adventure, one that would test his skills and bring him to the forefront of broadcasting history. Hicks typed and handwritten scripts for the expedition's broadcast was also used as part of this documentary. Hicks was also accompanied by two seasoned NBC radio field engineers, Walter Brown and Marvin Adams. Among the scientific members leading this ambitious endeavor were some of the brightest minds of their time, each contributing their unique expertise and passion to unravel the mysteries of the universe. Dr. Floyd Richtmeyer, a distinguished optical physicist and dean at Cornell University, stood at the forefront of this scientific expedition. At the age of 56, Dr. Richtmeyer brought with him a wealth of knowledge and experience, having served as a radio engineer in World War I. His relentless pursuit of understanding the intricacies of light and optics made him an invaluable asset to the team. Guiding the team on their spiritual journey was Dr. Father Paul McNally, an ordained Jesuit priest and renowned astronomer. Known for his deep devotion to the stars and his role as the director of the Georgetown Observatory, Father McNally seamlessly combined his passion for astronomy with his spiritual calling. He played a vital role in fostering the growth of Georgetown University and ensuring that the expedition's scientific endeavors were imbued with a sense of wonder and awe. Dr. Theodore Dunham, a brilliant 40-year-old scientist, brought a wealth of astronomical knowledge to the expedition. Having obtained degrees from Princeton, Harvard, and Cornell, Dr. Dunham had spent the past nine years at the prestigious Mount Wilson Observatory. It was during his time there that he made a groundbreaking discovery, unraveling the composition of Venus's atmosphere as predominantly carbon dioxide. His expertise and keen eye for detail added a new layer of understanding to the team's observations. Representing the National Bureau of Standards was Dr. Irvine Gardner, a 48-year-old spectroscopy specialist. Dr. Gardner's relentless dedication to advancing the field of astronomy through spectroscopy techniques made him a true pioneer. The accounts of the expeditions from his National Geographic, June 1938 story, Crusoe's of Canton Island, significantly contributed to the credibility and validation of other individuals' depictions of the events. Capturing the wonders of this expedition through the lens of his camera was Richard Stewart, a talented 36-year-old photographer from the National Geographic Society. Renowned for his ability to capture impactful images that spoke directly to the soul, Stewart had traversed the globe, bringing the world's wonders to the pages of National Geographic magazine and to this documentary. His artistic eye and dedication to the Society's mission ensured that future generations would be able to witness the grandeur of this celestial spectacle. In an era when imagination had to be translated onto canvas, Charles Bittinger, a 58-year-old renowned artist, embraced the challenge of capturing the eclipse's splendor. Combining his scientific background from shortly attending MIT with his passion for art, Bittinger's unique perspective allowed him to blend the worlds of optics and artistic expression. 
His artistic prowess had already left a mark on history, having played a vital role in camouflaging warships during World War I. A decade earlier, he had even patented a revolutionary automobile rearview mirror still used by millions today. Ensuring the safety and well-being of the entire expedition was Lieutenant Binny Williamson, a skilled 36-year-old naval officer piloting the USS Avocet. As the dedicated caretaker of the crew during their month-long voyage, Lieutenant Williamson's expertise and leadership provided a solid foundation for the success of the mission. With his steady hand at the helm, the team could focus on their scientific pursuits without any worry for their safety. Along with the crew of the USS Avocet, the U.S. Navy also dispatched 33-year-old Lieutenant Dr. Herman Gross as the expedition's medical officer. Eight years prior, Dr. Gross had joined the United States Navy, and for the past year, he had been stationed in the tropical paradise of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Accompanied by his wife and two young daughters, the youngest of whom was less than a year old, Dr. Gross had found solace in his family amidst the demands of his naval career. Driven by a deep sense of duty, Lieutenant Dr. Gross meticulously chronicled each day of the expedition, capturing its essence in a series of typed records. Although these writings were never intended to become official U.S. Navy documents, they held profound significance for Dr. Gross. They were meant to serve as a personal account of the expedition's activities, a way for him to share his experiences with his wife upon his return to Hawaii. Within the pages of Dr. Gross's journal, emblazoned with the USS Avocet's official letterhead, lay a treasure trove of invaluable insights. Alongside his written accounts, Dr. Gross also documented the expedition through photographs and 8mm film, capturing the mesmerizing spectacle that unfolded before his eyes. His journal, complemented by these visual records and supplemented by public testimonies, provided a comprehensive narrative of the daily events that shaped the scientific outcomes of this remarkable eclipse expedition. For nearly three quarters of a century, this remarkable journal remained hidden away in the depths of a family drawer, its significance unknown to the world. Join us as we delve into the story of Lieutenant Dr. Herman Gross and the awe-inspiring expedition of the USS Avocet. Through his and others' words, photographs, and film, we will witness a tale of scientific discovery, personal sacrifice, and the unyielding spirit of exploration that defined this extraordinary chapter in human history. Prepare to be captivated by the unfolding narrative of an expedition that bridged the gap between chaotic Earth and the heavens above.